want to talk about the, the event in the Gospel in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 and onwards. I want to talk about this passage because it's one of the favourite passages of Muslims. They misquote this passage continuously to Christians. And I want to talk about why this passage and what this passage means and how it isn't what Muslims think that it means. And I also want to talk about the seduction of riches and wealth and the love of this world and how the love of this world is a form of idolatry and our worship to God. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The question is to the rabbi Jesus, how can he inter inherit eternal life? And he calls Jesus, good teacher. And Jesus replied, why do you call me good? Now I want you to hear this properly, Muslims. Jesus replies, why do you call me good? He doesn't reply, don't call me good. Muslims often quote this passage to Christians as if Jesus said, don't call me good. Jesus doesn't say that. He said, why do you call me good? In other words, you recognize that I am good. Do you recognize that I am God? It isn't a refusal of his divinity. Muslims, you misread the verse and you do so because your da'i are lying to you. And then he goes on and he lists the Ten Commandments. And this is why Christians believe that the Ten Commandments are still part of the New Covenant. That is why Christians still use the Ten Commandments. It's why we still teach the Ten Commandments. And it's why the Ten Commandments are still applicable to Christians today. Not all of the Old Testament law disappears with the New Covenant. There is carryover. The prophets are interpreted through the apostles. And the man claims to have kept the commandments from his youth. But Jesus, seeing into his heart, says that you lack one thing. Sell all that you have and give it to the poor so that you might be made perfect and follow me. Now, out of this comes two teaching points. The first teaching point, my brothers and sisters, is that Christians should be weary of riches. We should be weary of the love of this world and of the materialism of this world. Don't be seduced by wealth. Don't be seduced by possessions. This is idolatry. Don't be consumed by your possessions. I am if she watches this video, sister. So, so, stay on track, brothers and sisters. But the other point that the Muslims don't hear is that Jesus said, follow him. Muslims don't follow Jesus. And to be perfect, you must follow Jesus. You must follow Jesus. Sell all that you have, give it to the poor and follow Jesus. Christ is commanding. He is commanding a kind of tuition to our souls. The tuition of poverty, the tuition that poorness, that poverty can draw you closer to God. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. 
Christ says that riches make it almost impossible for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. And why? Because when you own a lot, you want to own more. You want to hold on to it. You see it as yours. You don't want to share it. You don't want to give it up for the kingdom of God. You don't want to use it for God's purposes. You're selective about how it's used. Riches seduce us. Riches become an idolatry that takes God's place in our lives. But then the apostles ask a question. If this is true, who then can be saved? Because they recognized that Christ was saying that all possessions seduce, that all possessions intoxicate, that all possessions create attachments with the world. And he says, with mortals, this is impossible. But with God, this is possible. All things are possible. Because a heart and a mind submitted to God will be willing to use their riches and their possessions to the glory of God, the triumph of his church, and the expansion of God's kingdom on earth. And so, when we Christians give in to the impulses of the Holy Spirit, we recognize that our possessions, our riches, are not ours. They are for the use of the kingdom. All of them are given to you in trust so that you can use them for the glory of God, the triumph of his church and the expansion of his kingdom. And then it goes on. Peter began to say, Luke, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for the sake, for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age and eternal life in the world to come and persecutions in the world. Christians, when you follow your vocation, which is to follow the way of Jesus in the way that Jesus has called you, whether it is as a politician, a pugilist, a soldier, a policeman, a cleaner, an artist, a teacher, a medic, a GP, a nurse, a priest, a monk, a nun. When you follow Jesus in this way, you learn in this vocation that all that God has given you is for your vocation. And when you do this, you meet with your brothers and sisters who are doing the same and suddenly every Christian home is open to you for hospitality. That every Christian purse is open to you in charity. We Christians must practice a radical, liberal charity towards one another. To give freely without counting the cost to support one another. Those that we know who are following our Lord, open your hearts to them, open your treasures to them, open your chests to them, open your homes to them. I give a qualification. The qualification is to those who you know are following the Lord. Act wisely. We're not talking about opening all of your homes and your hearts and your treasures to the next person that says, 
give you, give me my, your mobile phone. But use wisdom with the things that God has given you. Because God has given you those things, not because he wants you to use them for you, but because God has given them for you to use them for him. And so all that you have is for his use, his glory, his church, his kingdom. Don't be seduced by the material world or the seduction of riches. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions going once? Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? Okay, so let's move on to another topic. <laughs>